Welcome year 11 to study workshop number five. This one is about passive versus active studying and note taking. Um, another sort of simple concept, but one that we don't often think about. So it's important to do so. So what are we going to talk about today? Basically, we're going to explore some very simple but effective study techniques that you can apply across a range of subjects. And we're also going to talk about the difference between active and passive study techniques. So to get started, this seems like a no brainer, but step one is it to actually study. There's no real substitute for revision. Um, it's a hard slog. We all have to do it. It's honestly the only way that your content and your skills are actually going to be refined enough to be able to sit an examination at the best of your ability. Um, if you do nothing to retain your memory, then your brain is most likely going to get rid of that knowledge. So you could be sitting in class and paying the best attention, but if you do nothing with it, it will go away. Your brain is um, designed to, to get rid of information that you don't need. Um, and so you have to train it to keep the content in there so that you can access it when you need to for your examination. So your brain doesn't really absorb information very well from passive activities. And what that mean is, means is like if you're just sitting there passively in class listening, um, you might be hearing it in the moment, but as you walk out that door, it's going to go away. You need to be actively taking notes, um, brainstorming, um, you know, transferring what's coming out of your teacher's mouth or through their actions or their words um, into something that you can actually use if your brain isn't focused on something, you're not going to remember it or you're not going to remember it well. Um, it's actually just a fact. Our brains are very efficient. And if you're not actually using it properly, your content is not going to be stored in there and will not be able to access, be accessed easily when you need it. Step, to, step number two is um, studying without distractions. Now, Miss Britt um, in her presentation mentioned this as well. Um, here's a secret. Your brain can't actually multitask with two demanding tasks. It flicks back and, back and forth between them. Um, Mr. Cole actually enlightened us last year about this. It's multitasking is actually a myth. Um, and I know we've heard that, you know, women do it better, but it's actually not true. Um, you're not actually focusing on two things at the same time. You are going between them and it's actually not very efficient at all. Um, as it does this, the rate of error increases by 50% and your rate of progress decreases by 50%. So that's some big numbers there. So you might be able to do this uh, quite well for a couple of minutes, but as time progresses, um, you are not going to be able to study properly and effectively at all. That's including listening to music, having Netflix playing in the background, um, having the radio on even. I know lots of people like to plug in their ears to block out other sounds, but if you have songs that have specific lyrics, you will be focusing on that as well. Um, so there is a case that instrumental music can be helpful, um, but not always. So difficult concepts require sustained focus in order to understand them. So if you're trying to study while you have other inputs going on, it's going to disrupt your memory. So your best bet is to have a quiet, clutter-free study space where you can just focus on what's in front of you. Step three, um, you need to know what you don't know. And we like to think of these as the traffic lights. So you, the syllabus is your best friend in most of your subjects, certainly. Um, even in your subjects where there's a lot of content and conceptual ideas like English, for example, the syllabus is still very useful because that is where we come to discover what skills we need to teach you and where the essay questions sometimes come from as well. You should be familiar with the syllabus and how it fits together. Your notes should be organized with syllabus headings and this is very much so for a lot of the KLAs and you'll know which ones I'm talking about. Um, so your study guide is, it's a good idea to get into this habit um, when you've got them on the page. Green means you've got this, I know this really well. I don't even have to really put in much effort to recall this information and explain it. Yellow, you might want to highlight in yellow is I understand it, but I could definitely use more revision. Um, you know, I can recall it, but not really explain it very well. 
and red is, uh oh, I really don't have any idea what this is. Did we even study that? Um, I've heard that many times as a teacher. So um, they're the ones that you're going to really go, oh, these are red. I need to spend a lot more time on these. Start your revision with your weakest points. And this is really good advice. Um, I say that a lot as well with any of your writing, extended writing subjects as well, as you are doing them and you're practicing, see what's missing. And that's what you're going to be focusing on in the next time that you have a practice. It's a really, really good tip. So another thing is, what if you get to a point in any of your subjects and you're like, I have no idea that dot, what that dot point means. I didn't even know it was there. Um, so what are you going to do? You're going to research it. You guys are independent human beings. Um, it's more than likely been said in class, but you may have missed it. That's human. Research it. Look it up. There is so much information out there. Uh, HSEB has been running for a very, very long time, and so have your subjects. Um, you guys need to get good. Need to get good at researching and doing this independently without relying on somebody just feeding you the information. If you research it and delve and dig deep, um, you're going to find that much more substantial and stick in your memory in a, a lot more of a, an efficient manner. So I need you to avoid this passive revision. And this is so easy to do, especially if you're tired and especially if you're not really sure what you're doing. We often resort to passive revision. What does this look like? Rereading a textbook highlighting the key parts in that textbook or in that document, writing verbatim summary notes. That just means you are copying what your teacher has given you and not putting in any changes or putting in your own understanding, reading somebody else's notes. Um, there's been many occasions where I've seen past students give their notes to the, pre uh, the, the, the upcoming year and there's nothing wrong with that, but you've got to understand that is in their format, their understanding. And so if you're just reading that passively, you're not really going to get much out of it. You need to be able to put it in your own words. Highlighting is a great thing to do, but if you do nothing with it, it's just going to look pretty. Um, so active, not passive. That's the key, key takeaway here. Do something with the information that you're given. We is, you know, a teacher might show you how to write a metaphor. But if you don't do something with it and try to transform it into a piece of creative writing, you're not going to be able to use it properly, especially in exam conditions where there is stress and time limits. So effective note taking is also really important to look at. Please don't write out your notes word for word. As I said, you need to put them into your own understandings and ideas. Summarize key ideas and information. Okay, that's a much, much better option. Focus on key terminology for your subjects. They all have them. Focus on dates, names and places. Not just a big description of them. Just go down to the bare bones of what you need to walk in and, and, and remember. Focus on key formulae. You can use a combination of written and visual organisations. That can also be really, really helpful. So it's not just all words on the paper. Maps and graphic organizers are amazing. I love these. They're great for drawing big ideas together. Um, it, it, it helps you understand how your learning fits. What are the big themes or ideas that, that draws everything together? These are not supposed to be loaded with detail. They are a big picture and complement your detailed notes. They can also be a really great tool for essay planning and you would have seen in your uh, extended response subjects that we use these a lot. Uh, English, we call them answer trees and they are so, so helpful. Um, general exam tips, and you guys are going to need this. Work out your exam timing. Don't spend too long on one section. Um, Year 12 has just done their trials and a lot of them trip up because they spend far too much time on one section and not the other. You will know um, how much time you need to spend on each section. Often it's even written on the paper, but it's up to you to look at that clock and manage your time. Even five minutes extra on one part of an exam and it takes away from another can be a lot of marks. Now, please clearly read every question, including the instructions. 
Again, this seems like a no-brainer, but when you're in a stressful situation, sometimes you can forget this. Um, and Nessa have in particular questions on there and the language that they use. We often call them the Nessa verbs. And if you look at the Nessa website, it will tell you exactly what these verbs mean and how you answer those questions. Um, because that's a, actually a really key part of when we're marking these exams, that you are answering those questions and looking at those verbs effectively. Also, in most of your exams, you're going to have more than one question. So answer every question. If you leave it blank, you get a zero. It's as simple as that. As that. You have to have a go at everything because you never know. We mark what's on that page. Um, in, in fact, in exams, you start at a zero. You get marks of what's on there. We don't take away marks. So if you're getting to a point where you're like, I really don't, and I was saying this to, to year 12 the other day, if you get a question or in English you get a poem or something that you just like, I really don't. I really don't understand what they're asking me or I really don't understand what this text is all about. But you know what? If you have a go at it, if you just pull, pull something out of there that you can put on that paper, it could be a couple of marks for you. So it is such a mistake to leave sections blank because you're not sure. Okay. So the key to success, you still have plenty of time. It's, it's ticking away, but you still have time. Be intentional, know what you need to work on and set some goals. Implement these active strategies, not the passive ones, especially at this stage and in the, in, as you're heading towards these exams. You do not have time for passage, passive strategies. You should be practicing. You should be taking effective personal notes that you can actually use in your exams. And I cannot stress enough, practice, practice, practice. You're not going to be able to um, churn out a five-page extended response if that is the first time you've ever done it when you walk into that exam. I can guarantee you that. It's very, very difficult. So I'm going to leave you with that. Um, exams are coming. Don't freak out. There's lots of time. There's lots of time to do notes. And there's still lots of time to do practice. Thank you.